Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this YouTube video, welcome to the Bitcoin Family YouTube channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. I will soon walk around the corner so there is less influence of the sun, guys. It's windy, windy, windy. Look, my hair is like windy, windy, windy now. Uh, I'm using a mic. Hopefully, that works. Hopefully, the stabilization of the iPhone also works because walk and talks make it not easy to film beautiful steady now um, today talking about Bitcoin blockchain in life the Bitcoin part is going to be a little bit short uh, TA wise uh, the rest fundamental wise a little bit longer talking about the Netherlands what happened there to us as a family uh, talking about Portugal now what is happening here every day to us and talking about way more things news whatever comes up to my mind I will soon also do some more lives every week because then I don't need to edit the shit and I like to do lives as well because that's more interactive with you guys so let's first start first in the Netherlands we stayed there for a couple of weeks two weeks of course we paid the accommodation with Bitcoin it's a short stay Venlo if you want to pay with Bitcoin in the beautiful city of Venlo short stay Venlo they also have a piano bar uh, and that bar you can also pay with Bitcoin so short stay Venlo and the piano bar both you can accept uh, both you can pay with Bitcoins now over there the Bitcoin price before you before you stop watching this video <laughs> is around 30,000 US dollar uh, that 30,000 US dollar price is a beautiful level of support is it that we can't break that support yes of course we can break that support we could fall all the way to 27,700 ish in my honest opinion if we break that support uh, that's not saying I'm not saying I'm that we are gonna break the support but if we break a 30k put your buy orders at 20,500 600 700 800 900 and even 28k put some buy orders there because if we break the support to that level bam we will bounce again to beautiful levels of 30k so that's a 2k profit per Bitcoin over there uh, if you trade with leverage a little bit more if you want to trade with leverage then yes of course click the link down below to buy a bit because then I earn something as well for doing all this beautiful content that I create every day for you guys you know educational entertainment value you know I need to make some uh, money as well my kids are growing up uh, they are now two weeks on a holiday I don't disclose the location anymore because people tell me Didi you shouldn't disclose the location so I'm not gonna disclose the location but life is getting more expensive so hey I need some more bitcoins so click those links down below buy a bit for example or if you want to be international uh, insured for traveling also a link there if you want to book your hotels also links there there's a beautiful links there click the links click the links click the links help me through the winter we were just hacked for 200k so we can use some extra bitcoins okay thank you now <laughs> then let's continue so the bitcoin price don't worry too much guys we are around the 30k level you know you you should keep buying every month when you get your salary in just like 80 percent buy bitcoin 20 percent used for paying your debts and all your costs and if they start to you ask you for to pay your rent and all that stuff say ah give me a few more months it's a financial crisis inflation i will pay later make sure you get the money into bitcoin bitcoin will pump up double and then you're able to pay um, your all the debts and then all that shit because the banks do the same same thing man I'm not gonna talk too much about that but i would buy a lot of bitcoin at the moment 30k 29 or 28k it doesn't matter just keep buying because there will be a push upwards again around that beautiful halving in 2024 april checking if the camera is still rolling still rolling this is my view by the way so if i'm walking here i look that way <laughs> now um venlo two weeks we went to the netherlands we went into venlo hometown city venlo um many people ask me do you like to go back to the netherlands no i don't like to go back to the netherlands i do like to go back to my friends and family uh, but not specifically the netherlands i don't like the netherlands the netherlands you guys all know if you're from america or australia or any other international followers that i have <laughs> the netherlands you know is the is the 90s netherlands the freedom netherlands the coffee shop netherlands the red uh, district netherlands the netherlands where everything is legal and possible that's the 90s netherlands the netherlands now is a little bit more like china like a little bit communistic 
not many more, co not many coffee shops anymore. The red, list, the red light district is being closed down in Amsterdam. You can't smoke weed on the streets anymore in Amsterdam. You can't smoke weed anymore on the streets in Amsterdam. And many more fucked up rules in the Netherlands that don't make it that free country anymore that I grew up in. If it would still have been the same country that I grew up in, I would still love the Netherlands. But now I realize it's gone. The freedom Netherlands is gone. It's completely gone. It's not like really completely the same like China already. Like that's maybe a little bit too more, a little bit more social credit system um, shit. Uh, the Netherlands doesn't have that yet, yet. But it's getting closer and closer. If I see how many cameras, I d I don't think there is a country in the world that has as much cameras as the Netherlands. Like on every corner of the street, there is cameras. You are being followed 24/7. So I, I do think the Netherlands is not that free anymore. But aside of the Netherlands not being that free, free feeling anymore, like the 90s, there is worse things happening. There is like, you remember the story of me going to the cinema with my daughter? This is like impossible in my opinion. In my opinion, it's impossible that people accept this. I am an adult of 45 years old. I want to take my daughter to the cinema where is a 16 plus movie. It's called the Kijkwijzer. It's a viewing rating system that says, okay, um, an advising, an adv an advisory organ that tells you this movie is 16 plus, so it has certain images that maybe children below 16 years can't watch. But you as a parent decide. At least, normally, we as a parent were able to decide. We are not able to decide anymore. And that's one of the most fucked up things I've ever seen um, in my life in the last couple of years. As I'm just walking around a little bit here. Because the wind is fucked up and the sun is also fucked up. So, I was the night entrance to the cinema with my daughter because she was 13 years old and I couldn't decide for myself ah, I think that my daughter should be able to watch this movie so these kinds of things are killing the freedom in the Netherlands and it's more and more of these things and now something else happened as well <clears throat> in the Netherlands they have something called handhaving it's not the police it's not the military it's mostly people that didn't have a job that needed to have a job and that are now able um, to even find you <laughs> to find you you know, they were able and when i were in the netherlands it already started a little bit but then it was just like they could say hey please uh, don't ride your bike in the in the city uh, we are from the government and we can uh, not find you but we can tell you please don't ride here and from that they now evolved into a sort of a semi-military police <laughs> where they are able um, to even find you so Yes, of course, there was an issue um, that we were almost fine, but they couldn't find us <laughs> because the kids um, are living in Portugal. So yeah, if you're registered in Portugal, then it's too much bureaucracy and paperwork. So there was no fine, but it was just for me, again, now also aside of the police and aside of all uh, the military stuff, now these people and in my opinion, mostly are not qualified to do this work, can now find you as well. Like, this is like the start of the social credit system, where more and more people have control on other people, so they have enough people to look at what other people are doing wrong, and then find them, and lock them up, and all that stuff. So there's a shit shitload of things happening there. Also in the news, in the news, it's showing images of Portugal, Spain and Greece where the weather is nice look I'm here chilly even in the mornings and the evenings but if you look on the weather map in the Netherlands it's dark red it's dark red it's lava you will die if you go to Portugal or Spain or Greece that is what the news the color is saying the news is even stating is it still safe to go on holiday to Spain, Portugal or Greece because it's fucking hot over there 45 degrees you are burning like you're burning hell don't go there 
It's hurting the climate. <laughs> climate lockdown. You can't go there. It's too hot. I'm here. It's not hot. It's not hot. I am in the Algarve, in the dark red area where it should be 45 degrees. It is not even 30 degrees. In the evening, sometimes I even wear a sweater. It has never been so cold as it has been now in the midsummer in Portugal. The water is 15 degrees. My dick shrimps inside again. When I go into the water, it goes, it goes back. That's how cold it is. Don't be fooled by that, by that news. So that's, that, these things in the Netherlands, I just can't understand that people still believe this shit and that people still listen to this shit and that people just are influenced by this. But now, I also need to admit that I now understand why people in the Netherlands are always commenting but you can't live all in Bitcoin, Didi. It's impossible to live all in Bitcoin. And I need to admit now that in the Netherlands it's pretty fucking difficult. And you know why it's pretty fucking difficult? Because they regulated and KYC the fucking shit out of Bitcoin and any company that wants to accept it or distribute it or even program software for it. So, yes, I need to admit, the only way I could spend my Bitcoins in the Netherlands was with my debit card, which is another story, because there was no other way, even if I could do OTC deals in the Netherlands, like exchange my Bitcoins for cash, there are less and less and less shops and places just where I can pay with cash small amounts of cash like let's stand huge amounts of cash you can't even pay with two thousand three thousand dollar in cash anymore in the Netherlands I think it's becoming illegal even businesses can't accept those amounts of cash anymore in a legal way so cashless society coming there very quickly when my when, when I stop at the gas station driving to the Hague with my friend Ronnie uh, to the Doopy cash event the gas station didn't have employees <laughs> the, 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 the lock, the, the thing where normally the, how do you call it, like the, the window where the women is working and accepting the payments, <laughs> there was now a machine and you could only use a card or, um, no, that one was only with a card. You couldn't use cash in that machine. And then when I need to go to the toilet, there was also a machine. <laughs> Just imagine you are in a hurry, you need to go to the toilet and then you are searching for your card and then you or you don't have a card and you need to shit you shit in your pants because you don't make it on time because the machine is stopping you from entering the toilet now so that whole cashless society there yeah it's quickly going and <clears throat> I can see now that the Netherlands people where you come from um, I completely understand this I also gonna make a, a Dutch video very soon about this because um, I think there is solutions for that uh, and I'm creating one of those solutions probably or I'm supporting one of the solutions. I found a solution that I want to support to the fullest because they are bringing Bitcoin local again, peer to peer, making it possible for people to do small OTC transactions in a legal way. So creating a beautiful on and off ramp for people like in the Netherlands um, that will help you with escaping that system that wants you to only use um, cards and digital forms of money and and people might say now can you please talk about the price again yes I will talk about the price because if you keep believing those motherfuckers the price will never go up <laughs> because then you will keep your money in euros or Australian dollars or American dollars and as long as you keep your banks filled with money over there the Bitcoin price is not going up guys or are you waiting for other people to pump the price you don't think it's your responsibility to pump the price as well? You're just lazy sitting there at home, peacefully, having a revolution without participating, waiting for BlackRock to step in, pump in money and then take your profits? Maybe we should um, uh, change that attitude into now going to your fucking bank, withdrawing all your cash and putting it all in Bitcoin. Maybe that will also pump the price. If the whole Netherlands will do that, it would definitely pump the price. There's a few billion dollars, I think, on the bank accounts in the Netherlands. Withdraw, pump into Bitcoin. That will pump the price more than BlackRock will ever be doing. But still, yes, you believe 
that it's all not gonna happen. And then I read those beautiful articles that it's already happening. I've seen it happening now in Australia. Did you see the video I, I posted on Twitter? This guy deposited a small amount of cash to be able to withdraw it later. And the moment he deposited the cash in Australia, his bank account got frozen without any reason. They didn't even ask him if the cash was legal. They just said, you need to prove now directly where all the cash is coming from, blah, 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 frozen. <clears throat> the whole story around it, I don't want to even know the specifics or details. It's your money. You put it on a bank account that you're allowed to do and you should be allowed to use it, but they should not be allowed to freeze it without any reason. <clears throat> Bam. But yeah, in Australian news, there already states that the biggest banks in Australia are want to go cashless. So the amount of withdrawals that you can do daily in cash is going to go down every every time again. Now it's around thousand Australian dollar per day that you can go and cash out. So just imagine you're a little bit more rich. So you have like 100k on your bank account. Uh, you see something very beautiful on the online marketplace or Amazon or whatever, and you want to buy your car secondhand for 15,000 Australian dollar. So you go to your bank account because the seller wants to have cash you want to cash that 15,000 US dollar Australian US do Australian dollar I should say uh, Aussie dollar maybe that's better yeah I didn't even know how you call it doesn't matter then you need to go 15 days in a row <laughs> to the bank before you're able to buy that car that's how ridiculous it's becoming now in Australia so from that they will go to 500 and then to 200 and to 100 and then to that cashless society because they really believe that the cashless society is better for humanity. And I agree with them. Yes, of course, when it's a decentralized form of a cashless society, I agree, that is better for humanity. That's why we have Bitcoin. Bitcoin is that decentralized peer-to-peer -peer cash system that is also a store of value that we can use with everyone in the world and everyone has access to. But the moment that a digital cashless society is run by the governments again, a central bank's digital um, society, a central bank's cashless digital society, that is the moment that I'm like, nah, I don't want to be in a social credit system tied to a cashless society that is again run by the central banks and the governments, those who have been fucking up in the last couple of decades because we needed to reset the economy almost every seven or ten years because they made so much mistakes and created a bubble and now i want to give them full control again in this new in this new world in this new financial system that would will, will be cashless don't, didn't think so i don't want to give that and where's now the bureaucracy can't we vote for what we want can't we just push the button and choose no we want a decentralized cashless society is that not the reason why democracy exists are we not the people that pay tax so the government can pay their employees, their politicians? Do we not pay you? You should listen to us. We are the ones paying for your life, politicians. So you should listen to us. And if you want to listen to us, you want to create a system that makes it easy for you to ask a question and understand what the people want. So as fast as you were able to create a, a QR code system to check if someone was vaccinated or not, that's the same system you can build on blockchain, decentralized, where you ask the people of the Netherlands, would you prefer to have a centralized cashless system, uh, a cashless system or a decentralized cashless system? Cashless system. And then the Netherlands will answer. Ah, we want the centralized uh, system because that's safer, because then it's in control of the government. Or we'll say, fuck you, you made so many mistakes, decentralized, let's use Bitcoin. So that is how a democracy should work. But uh, by that visiting the Netherlands the last two weeks, I quickly understood that that democracy has died completely in the Netherlands. And even worse, in my honest opinion, with all the respect to my friends and family, I don't even think that the people of the Netherlands and probably many people out there could handle a decentralized cashless society.
I think that a lot of the people I, with all respect, mostly refer to as sheeple, will follow the new leaders again. Because when I was in the Netherlands, the cabinet, so the government fell down, Rutte and all the other idiots that were screwing up the Netherlands, they stepped away. So they will be replaced, probably by even people that are worse than them, because the people in the Netherlands don't have a vote. If they vote, it still doesn't count. <laughs> so, um, and, and there is always a reason why suddenly this government stops and goes sit down, lean back, and doesn't come into the news anymore. Mostly, there was a new job waiting for them, probably in a higher level in Europe, so they can even screw up the Netherlands more, but now without being responsible for the Netherlands, essentially. So don't um, be too happy yet. But yes, uh, what I said, I, I don't think that in the Netherlands, democracy still is alive, and I do, don't think that the people are even there anymore that want to support that democracy. Because people start to become too pampered, too spoiled, like we decide for you if you can go to the cinema, we decide if you can drink a beer, we decide if you can do this, we decide if you can do that, we decide if you, that's the government, the we. And people are always saying, yes, okay, okay, okay. So yeah, I, I, I don't feel any peaceful or even aggressive revolution mindset in the Netherlands like we see on the television in France where the people really are going into the streets and say fuck off I am not going to pick I, I'm not going to do this uh, this is the end we are going to disrupt the France economy if you don't listen to us government I don't know if it's helping yet but at least they try and I'm trying what they do I can't even see that except the farmers in the Netherlands that put a tractor on the streets uh, but even then they get shot by the police and even then they stop putting tractors on the, on the streets. So yeah, <clears throat> in my opinion, the Netherlands is fucked up. Um, I still love the Netherlands though for my friends and family uh, and the good food that we have over there. Um, but again, it's, uh, it was a strange, strange thing to see again and to realize that I'm a lucky bastard being able to travel all over the world and, um, and compare all those countries and all those prizes because guys in the Netherlands, believe me, the Calvé Pindakaas, I don't know if you know what Calvé Pindakaas, it's like peanut butter from the Netherlands, but the Calvé Pindakaas in Portugal is cheaper than in the Netherlands, but it's made in the Netherlands and that counts for many other products. They are cheaper in Portugal than in the Netherlands. My life in Portugal probably is around 40% cheaper than my life in the Netherlands, uh, which I find a lot for a two and a half hour flight because a coffee here in Portugal um, inside um, like, like, like 10 minutes from sea from from from, from coastline you pay 50 cents and um, here in the small bars and everything in Lagos which is a very touristic area you pay still one euro for a coffee at our beach one euro 50 sometimes two euro um, if we have inflation as well <laughs> But yeah, that's the price. But in the Netherlands, I already pay now three euro fifty uh, for a, for a simple coffee. Cappuccino is already five euro, um, and other stuff was really really expensive as well. Uh, a toasty, a toasty, like it's a toasty for me is like two slices of bread with cheese, maybe some ham, uh, and then you know put it in this machine that it becomes warm, whatever. <laughs> in the Netherlands, you pay nine euro nine fucking euro for a toasty i don't pay more than four euro for a toasty here um, on our beach bar bam bam beach you pay six euro now for the toasty but you get a bucket of chips with it and tomato and fresh pesto and it's a beautiful healthy bread and all that stuff yeah but that's the beach bar the netherlands is a small town in the south of the Netherlands. It's not on the beach it's not like a location but you still pay a shitload now for a toast. so i did make a calculation of the last time five months Thailand and now the five months Europe um, if you want to know more about the calculation uh, join my telegram group ask me there and I will tell you what exactly the difference is but it's a huge difference there's a huge difference I will make another video about that because this video is becoming too long it's a fucking complaining video can't I be happy today I should be happy uh, but I will make another video about that because um, yeah it's, it's a huge difference guys the difference is too big uh, for me to even keep living I think in Europe because yeah it's massive it's a massive 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 difference 
even if you calculate the housing with it, it's still a huge difference in Thailand. And then in Thailand they have a huge kick-ass house with huge rooms and huge pool, a huge garden. And even if I calculate that with all the healthy things I do there, I'm still way, way, way cheaper than in Portugal, which is way cheaper than the Netherlands, which makes it a very strange situation. Now, um, did I forget anything? Probably forgot a lot of stuff, but this is a 26 minute video. Sorry it was only complaining, but I wanted to give my real hardcore feelings on the Netherlands, what I felt the last two weeks, but also on the Bitcoin price. You should be buying Bitcoin all the way. So that's the only escape you still have left to leave the Netherlands because the on and off ramp in the Netherlands will be killing the whole Bitcoin industry for the Dutch people, in my honest opinion. So, for all the people, uh, if you did enjoy this today's video, uh, please give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, leave a comment, what do you think about this? Maybe it was a little bit too complainery, maybe I should be a little bit more positive, but I didn't have it in me today. Today, I'm going to go and enjoy the beach again. Uh, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it. See you later again tomorrow with a beautiful TA update and maybe also again some blockchain news. Bam!